All right, let's figure out what Mr. Echidna thinks about the kiss. The most controversial scene in ReZero. Actually, I don't even know if this episode is the most controversial, but I thought that people will be pretty up in arms talking about it because of how the things went down. But hey, you already know my take. What does Echidna think about it? Happy ReZero Day, everybody. And thank you, Surfshark, for sponsoring this video. You sneaky I live motherfucker. in the US, but Echidna yep. for 83% <gasps> off plus three 83? extra months free. Oh I've been my using God. Surfshark since 2019. No and way. And it's safe the entire no time. No way. Off plus three extra Whoa! months free. Today, we were blessed with another ReZero masterpiece. That's this was right. one of the best episodes of the entire season and what- <laughs> Yeah, every intro. Every intro, bro. It's one of the best. Yep, this is the best. 10 out of 10. This now. This is for sure the best. What stood out to me the most was the incredible voice acting. Yeah. Both Subaru and Amelia's VAs delivered a stunning performance as they usual, did. but I think the highlight was definitely the guy that voices the bug. Oh, the, oh, the bugs? Bugs from Otto's backstory. Okay. <laughs> Last Never week's cute. episode was mostly dialogue and setup, but this week we finally got some action and also some action. Oh. <laughs> we got to see a. Oh, more Oto stuff. But, ah, oh, man, they cut out such important Oto fighting stuff, man. He, like, created a spirit bomb by collecting all the mana of the creatures in the forest, and it was the great battle of the forest of the Cromaldi or something, and ugh, they cut that shit out. A bit of Otto's past, which basically explained how Otto became such a great character. Uh, Otto's little brother sucks. Character. He's able to understand Subaru on a level that no other character can. After being isolated and exiled from his home, Otto mm -hmm. experienced the exact same loneliness he later recognized in Subaru. Both That's right. The person he was saving wasn't Subaru, but rather a reflection of his past self. Otto and Subaru had to suffer because of their powers. And that's why Otto sees a reflection of his past self inside mm -hmm. of Subaru. <laughs> so when Otto... One could say Otto is actually not a true friend of Subaru, but is a selfish, narcissistic egomaniac that can only see himself in others and saves others in order to save himself. Mmm. Otto the sociopath. Otto is helping Subaru. Subaru the groomer. He also feels like he's helping himself at the mm. same time. And that's why the two of them get along so well. Yeah, both fucking narcissistic egomaniacs. Just like me too! By the way, if the anime didn't make it clear enough, young Otto did in fact fall in love with the white cat we saw. What? No, you're, you're just joking right now, right? So yeah, that was a thing. The what?! In the web novel or the light novel? It, it, I don't remember this cut content. I, I, I mean, I mean, if you, if you look at a cat, bro. I mean, a cat's, I mean, goddamn. This little slutty eyelash. It. <laughs> this is crazy. Both? Web, oh no. I, I was hoping that maybe it was only in the web novel, but not the light novel. So we could do some like defensive like, oh yeah, you know, light novel is the only source of material that matters, but... I'm afraid Otto is cooked. Fall in love with the white cat we saw. So yeah, that was a thing. The next flashback actually took place during season one. And as That's you can see, Otto was very grateful to be alive. So it makes sense for him to feel like he's in Subaru's debt. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed by how well directed all these flashbacks were, though I couldn't help but laugh when I saw this one frame. I <laughs> what? The mind break frame? This is a classic. Just put the angle right above your head frame, right? This is like supposed to depict people going crazy. Laugh when I saw this one frame. I enjoyed the fight with Garfield too. The animation was actually much better than I expected, but I was disappointed about some of the cut content. In Aldona, the spirit bomb. In both of the novels, Otto actually used the earth spell Dona in its ultimate form. Yeah. In season one, the spell was first used by Betelgeuse, though he did cast a much weaker version with the prefix Ul. <laughs> So I guess it is now confirmed that UL is like a weaker prefix than AL. I just thought that AL was weaker because UL Goa seemed like a bigger flame than AL Goa. Same with AL Shuma and UL Huma, but UL weaker, AL stronger. Otto's version of the spell with the prefix AL is the earth magic spell at its highest level. So to be able to cast it, Otto had to bar- Hmm. Does that mean AL? Also uses earth magic. No, that's a dumb theory. Because this is a prefix that works on every magic. 
and Dona is the earth part. ...highest level, so to be able to cast it, Otto had to borrow mana from the forest itself. And even that wasn't enough to stop Garfield. But luckily, Rom... That's right, it was like, Otto, like Garfield didn't even take damage. Like, we gathered all the sacred resources, the mana, from the forest. Like, this is SAO, Alice, like, creating a spirit bomb, unleashes it. Garfield just, huh, just a breeze, just did nothing. Barely scratched him. ...was to successfully deal any amount of physical damage to Garfield in his beast form definitely yeah. requires a tremendous... This, this was shocking to me. Like, like, when I saw Ram throw hands, I was genuinely shocked because I was like, oh, okay, she's really fucking strong. Now, this is the physical enhancement stuff, and Ram also can't do this for long. Apparently, this is like a demon, kind of like... Basically, it's a demon mode without the horn, so this shit doesn't last long, but, like, I was actually shocked at how strong Ram was. Now, Ram is no longer just funny, sassy maid that I just meme with because her personality is something I vibe with. Like, she can fight. She can literally fight. ...requires a tremendous amount of strength, so this episode reminded us how powerful Rom truly is. The author even yeah, called Rom a boss-level character, similar... In fact, in, in the conditions are right, Lamb, who is Ram, is the strongest class in the work, so it's okay to play a song like a white- What the fuck is this garbage translation? Similar to the white whale. Otto was pretty awesome. One more? Called Ram a boss level character, similar to the white whale. Otto and that's her without the horn. What happens if she has the horn? Otto was pretty awesome too. If anyone was confused about this part, what he did was distract Garfield by using his divine protection to communicate with the beast language. We also got to see another powerful magic spell cast by Rom this time. Rom G is the highest level wind magic spell, so it's kind of insane that Rom was still able to use it even without her horn. Exactly. For those of you that haven't seen my magic video, each we will, yeah, we're gonna watch this shit probably at the end of season two. I don't care if there's no spoilers in this thing. It's better in my in about a month, we're about to hit another fucking Zenkai boost of viewership. Things are about to fucking double again, so I'm just waiting for that. ...that haven't seen my magic video, each magical element has four levels to every spell. L for example, here's Huma, the basic level water magic spell. Mm -hmm. That was fucking crazy. This L Huma... Notice how the ice is made with the blood. Look, look, look. First, it's blood, and then it gets crisp, it gets hardened. The liquid blood then turns into ice. Fucking crazy. Look at that. Sending Subaru up. So yeah, the most important thing you guys need to remember is that any spell with the prefix Al, Al. is extreme. A. Hey. Al is so cheeked up in this one. And this is official fan art too, right? Why is he so fucking cheeked up back there? Is extremely powerful. Additionally, at the end of the episode, Garfield was revealed to be alive, which means he was able to withstand two of the most powerful spells in ReZero. Once again- And is- is Ram and Otto dead? I don't think so. This should be the successful loop, so they're probably not cut in half like what happened before. Again, reminding us how strong he is. All right, moving along, let's talk about Emilia's first Woo! kiss. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't count as a kiss? My bad, guys. I played the wrong clip. Here is Emilia's first kiss. Kiss of death right now. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, now the real one. Here is Emilia's actual yeah! first kiss. Woo! You see this, everyone? Yeah, this I'm seeing that. This could be you if you quit League of Legends. I'm sorry, I can't relate. I already have a girlfriend. Subaru once again confesses to Amelia, except this time, he tells her how he truly feels. But his mm. true feelings were not entirely positive. For the first time ever, Subaru reveals the malice and disgust he's harbored towards Amelia after watching her fail repeatedly. Thank you, King. I'm so glad he said this shit. Like, I... Because, like, we're coddling her. We're like, it's okay, baby girl, you can do it! And now he's like, oh! Over and over and over of disappointment, like my son. This is 
fucking Kenichi feels about Subaru. No. Kenichi feels probably good about Subaru. Kenichi wouldn't pop off like this. My first reaction was that Subaru was being a bit too harsh, but I mean, let's be honest here. So far this season, Emilia has been a- Yeah. Want you to understand? 14 fucking episodes in a row. Emilia taking L's over and over and over and over again. How could you not feel this way? It makes sense. But it also makes sense why she's failing. She can't pass. Memories are locked away. But now that the memories are back, thanks to Puck fucking off as usual, now she can do it. ...about as useless as Bikini Bottom's fire department. Emilia this season was less essential- There's a lot of... I know it may seem ridiculous that there's a fire department in Bikini Bottom Spongebob, but there's also a lot of crazy conspiracy theories about Spongebob and why this fire department actually matters. Like, yes, in a face glance, why do you have a fire department under the sea? But there's a lot of different crazy theory videos. I implore you to go check out Spongebob videos. My favorite theory is the secret, uh, the secret formula of the Krabby Patty is actually made from the body of Pearl's real mom. Mr. Krabs has a daughter who is Pearl, who is a whale. But there's also a lot of little Easter eggs that points that Mr. Krabs used to be in the like, war times and perhaps might have fought against a big whale. And now that carcass of that whale is the secret ingredient for the Krabby Patty. You think I'm crazy? That's what I thought too. Watch the videos, bro. There is super in-depth SpongeBob theories that blows your fucking mind. Fire department. Emilia this season was less essential than Nezuko's voice actor. <laughs> Emilia's confidence. Uh, Nezuko's voice actor or Rem in season two? Rem has a couple lines through Carmilla, but you know. Was less existent than Donald Trump's Twitter account. And yeah, three years ago that would have made sense, but you know now. <laughs> Now the king is back. Rem has accomplished more than Amelia this season just by being asleep. <laughs> but True. despite all of that, Subaru still loves her. Regardless yeah. of how pathetic Amelia might be, Subaru will always accept her. Yeah, why? Because I love you. But why do you love me? Because I love you. That doesn't make sense. No, it's because I love you. And he would never hate or abandon her because of her weaknesses. Since the beginning of ReZero, Subaru has been obsessively infatuated with Amelia, but yep. hasn't gotten much of anything in return. When he confessed to her, she wouldn't say anything back, and every time he tried to flirt with her, she would either ignore him or change yep. the subject. Yep. Based on the He's always forced his hand upon her, did something to make her owe him a favor, let's go on a date! All the stuff like that, Amelia has never seen him as a man, if anything like a fucking pet, like a stray dog that she adopted, but now... Season 2 episode 15, a kiss happened. This is the turning point. The evidence I've collected, my conclusion is that- Yes, the Mrs. Puff theory is also fucking crazy. And we're getting off track right now with the Spongebob stuff, but I'm glad to see that there's some enjoyers of the crazy Spongebob theories that exist on YouTube. It is absolutely bonkers. At before this week's episode, Natsuki Subaru was what we call down bad. Mm -hmm. Simpin, white knighting! Huh? As you can see. <laughs> that might be the most cringe moment. The moon is pretty as he looks at the ceiling. Because he didn't know what to fucking say. Holy shit, that was cringe. And me was like, huh? What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? Uh, I, 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 I don't know, I'm just trying to say something right now because it's awkward. As you can see, it was a long, painful journey for Subaru, but finally, this week's episode confirmed 100% that mm. Amelia does have feelings for When you say feelings of romance, I think they will happen from now on out due to that kiss. But if you ask me before this leading up to it, I don't think so. I think that, again, the situation felt weird. It almost seemed like Subaru was grooming Amelia. I don't believe that's what's happened. I believe that due to the situation that Roswell has created where Amelia is lonely, dependent, isolated, traumatized, alone, Subaru being there and the only action he could do to prove why he loved her to throw that kiss, I get it, but I don't, I don't agree that like Amelia has feelings for Subaru romantically leading up to this point. But from now on, with the kiss being made, I believe it will be a turning point, and th these two will probably, the romantic relationship will probably finally start. 
for Subaru, and this kiss they shared is the first major development in their relationship progression. There has been some hints dropped in a couple episodes this season that Amelia might have had feelings for Subaru, but it was never anything too promising. Mm. That kiss, though, obliterated any doubts you might have had. And I hate to say it because it was a good scene, but the kiss of death at the end of season was even better. Season 2, episode 11 wasn't significant whatsoever. That mind broken version of Amelia probably would have kissed anyone at that point, so it definitely doesn't count. Like, I never thought that kiss counted. I never blamed Amelia for it either. I thought it was just like a really cool way to wrap up that loop where Amelia went fucking insane. I thought it was amazing. The toy box theme playing, the visual distortion, Subaru bleeding out like crazy. As far as I'm concerned, this week's episode was their first actual kiss. That being said, I want to applaud Subaru for finally doing it. It almost feels like one of my best friends just lost their virginity. I mean, this is what we've all wanted Subaru to do for such a long time. I know I was hoping it would happen at the end of season 1, episode 25. Yeah, and what happened here? <laughs> Amelia's like, love? You love me? Uh, uh, I need some time to think about it. But looking back, I'm happy they waited until now because this was such an amazing moment. Don't forget though, Subaru can still die. And if he does... I don't think he'll die. I feel like this is the problem with ReZero. And it's not a problem. I'm metagaming. Remember the fight that we had at the Royal Capital? I felt because that was so significant. It would make no sense to loop and erase that and for Subaru to just clean his slate. I feel like there's moments where it needs to stick throughout that timeline. So therefore, this kiss has basically shown me that there is no fucking way that we're going to loop. And even if we do, there's going to be a checkpoint made after this. Because this moment cannot be erased. Now, keeping this in mind, it'll be very fun in the future episodes in Season 3, Season 4, Beyond, where... The author of Tape has now conditioned me to think like this and then subvert my expectations. When that moment comes, I'll be like, that motherfucker got me again. God damn, he's good. But again, it just feels like this is the perfect run now. Then that kiss never happened. Let me know in the comments how pissed you would be if Subaru dies next episode. I, I'd be laughing. I wouldn't be mad if Subaru died next episode. I'd be laughing. I'd be shocked. And I'd say... That crazy madman, he did it. He actually fucking just <laughs> made them kiss and just threw it away to make Subaru what? Go more insane? I don't know. I, I would find it hilarious personally. I wouldn't be mad. Another reason Subaru kissing Amelia was so important is because it provided some context about Satella. A lot mm. of you guys have shared theories in the comment section that Satella is either Amelia from the past, the future, another timeline, or some variation of that. Well, yeah, I think that any of that could be true. I think that it's possible that perhaps this is the reincarnation of Satella. I know that Satella herself is not really fully dead. Her flesh was not destroyed and she was sealed away by the hero, the sage, and the dragon. But I feel like there's different ways to do reincarnation, even if that's the case. But there is a connection. Well, if we think back to Subaru's conversation with Satella, some of yeah. the cut content from that episode has been made relevant once again. Back okay. when Satella revealed why she's in love with Subaru. Right, there's a lot of these passages that happen. And we have actually done these things for Amelia during the canon episodes too. I've definitely recognized these scenes. She said it's because he held her hand on lonely nights and kissed her when she was alone. Now yep. two episodes- Literally, last night, right? Literally happened. Episodes ago, this made absolutely no sense. But last episode, we got to mm -hmm. see Subaru holding Amelia's hand on- And now, is this a coincidence? Or is the author showing us passages? And it's not even just this. There's also a passage in the Shadow Garden moment talking about how he was slothful because he couldn't wipe away her tears. We wiped Amelia's and Satala's tears away too. There's a lot of these things that happen that suggest that, hmm, all these reasons. Why Satala loves us is happening before our eyes right now. On a lonely night. And then this episode, he kissed her and told her she wasn't alone. That pretty uh. much matches what Satella said word for word. And yes, it could just be a coincidence, but... It could be, right? But with a show like this, I think that Nagatsuki Tape is one to do intentional Easter eggs. Provide little hints here. Just sprinkle the seeds of controversy or conspiracy. And see if his audience can pick it up. Maybe it's nothing, but 
Maybe it's just in front of our eyes, happening before us right now. But if you ask me, it sounds like Satella knew this would happen. We know she's got the power to control time, so was Satella referencing the future when she said that to Subaru? I don't know what all of this means, but I thought you guys might have found it interesting. And as always, I'd be happy to read your thoughts and theories in the comment section below. I thought this episode was... And on the topic, are you still doing kiss stuff? So, there's another thing where... We're not able to explain why Subaru loves Amelia so much. I love you, but I don't know why. I love you because I love you. I love you because I love you. How could you believe me because I love you? I love you because I believe you. It's just this loop of circular thinking of it's because he loves her. But not only are these passages kind of proving Satala, sorry, Amelia and uh, Subaru relationship, just hinting at things that a Subaru has done for Satala, but I could also see how his inexplicable love is a subconscious feeling coming from a different Subaru, perhaps the pre-reincarnation, whatever, the idealized Subaru that has the memories with Satala, right? Past, present, future, I don't know, but maybe these are subconscious knowledge just leaking out, and that's why he can't explain his love for Emilia like that, because it's for Satala and he's lost the memories for that, and beginning of the end, end of the beginning, I don't know nothing short of a masterpiece. Can we just stop to appreciate how lucky we are that ReZero has literally the perfect cast of voice actors in both the sub and the dub. The Blaze. same applies to the music as well. Every time ReZero plays a new song, it becomes an instant classic, and I can't say that about most other anime. Glaze. Otto's past was adapted perfectly. We even got to see Betelgeuse again, who's yep. always been one of my favorite True. characters. Ricardo showed up again too, and at first I was a little bit scared because I felt like I might have been more excited than some of the furries out there. And finally, <laughs> The kiss of life, as I'm gonna call it, was the kiss of life. Nice one. The opposite of the kiss of death. Unbelievably breathtaking. And honestly, I can't really complain about anything that happened to this episode. Definitely one of a kid that is really taking the easy way out, huh? I mean, that's a lot of comments, got a lot of views. And I guess it's in his best interest not to stoke the flames of controversy by talking about. How that kiss happened, to talk about the different headspace that Amelia and Subaru is at, and potentially implied that Subaru could have grooming Amelia, but none of that is mentioned. Hmm, I want to save video. One of the best episodes of the season, I really hope they continue adapting ReZero with the same quality. 10 out of 10, episode. baby. But because Kadokawa took down my Greed If video and what? gave my channel a copyright strike. Really? Wow. The Greed If video got a strike specifically from Katakawa. Wonder exactly what material. Because it's transformative content, but Katakawa has never been actually what to go out and just like send out strikes like that. Straight up, Katakawa has never done that. Of, and I'm pretty sure the Greed If video is back. In fact, let's check that right now. This is interesting, actually. Because like, there's a lot of um, studios that are like Kodansha, for sure. King's Records, Mobeat. Um, NHK, I forget the studio, but like there are some studios that are very, um, very, very strict with copyright strikes abusing it on YouTube, but greed if, let's see. No, he has it up. I guess he won the strike, but I wonder exactly what he showed to warrant a strike from Katakawa if it was actually from Katakawa. I'm giving this episode a zero out of ten. Huh, interesting. On a serious note, for anyone that hasn't heard, Kadokawa is removing all sorts of ReZero videos Re and delivering copyright strikes to- Oh, they were just going out on a fucking campaign. Like, what the hell was happening three years ago with Kadokawa? A lot of channels, including mine. I am essentially Any ReZero content? my channel right now by continuing to talk about ReZero, so make sure you guys follow me on Twitter in case my channel gets taken down. I but remember, at the end of the day, these copyright strikes are- fraudulent strikes abusing the YouTube copyright system where it's shoot first, ask questions later, you will always fucking win. You will always win if your content is indeed transformative. It's not in the best interest of the corporation from Japan to take you, escalate the case to the court. It is simply a campaign of strikes to put fear into the people that potentially could be just re-uploading ReZero content because during that time, Reezer was very popular and they might have been more stringent. There's it's just employees just receiving a quota to be like, yep, go find Reezer videos on YouTube that seems to be, you know, violating the copyright strikes and just send it out. But you will always win if your, transform if your content is transformative. I also want to say thank you to everyone who's been showing me support during all of this. It That's pretty much it. Please go give Mr. Echidna a like on the video.
Here's the link. I'm just a little disappointed that we were not able to delve into the mindset of Emilia and Subaru and what that kiss could have potentially implied, but it's looking like I'm the weirdo, man. I'm, on, I'm the only one fixated on this kiss and how it feels. I'm a fucking woke Twitter leftard that is saying cancel Subaru because he's a groomer. No, I don't actually feel that way, but I, I would have loved to see Echidna's take on like what this kiss meant and the personalities, traits, and like the psychology behind Amelia and Subaru that led up to this. But yes, we're not going to get it in this video. And that's it for me. Bye-bye.